And I was in Columbia with a small team of guys, and we were actually staying in a very nice hotel because it, it was the safest place for us to stay. Because at this point in Columbia, you didn't want to be a gringo walking around in Columbia. So it was, it was a dangerous time. Nobody was going to get steaks and going on vacation in Columbia. So I remember I'm coming back for a run, and I come into this hotel, and all my guys are at the bar, which was not totally unheard of, but at this time of day, it was a little awkward. And I remember as I see them, they kind of wave me over, like, you got to get over here, Boston. As I, I walked up as that second tower, that second plane crashed into the second tower. It was a very strange experience. I, I, um, I don't have a better word. I, I love language. I don't have a better word than strange. And the reason I say that is, is you know, on the coin of that moment, you know, on one side of the coin, we were absolutely aware of the suffering, the horror of that moment, the fallout that the families would deal with, and, the, and that, that our country was, was about to experience a, a very new direction in our, in our history. <laughs> Little did we know how much. Um, but the thing that was strange is on the flip side of that coin, there was some excitement. And, and don't, you know, stay with me for a second. Not excited for the event happening, but if you can imagine being an athlete and practicing every day at a sport and never getting to play a game, you'd be a crazy person if you never got to play a game. Well, well, well we practice for war. We practice for responding to events like this. So, so the fact that this happened, we kind of figured our phone would be ringing. So there was a level of excitement that went with it. I didn't realize how quickly it would ring. I mean, within days, we were all reconstituted into, um, we have a big airfield in Roosevelt Roads, Puerto Rico, big place where you can fly planes anywhere in the world. And we started packing what's called our war bags. So you pack a bag for jungle warfare, pack a bag for mountain warfare, pack a bag for maritime assaults. So you basically pack individual flyaway bags that we will have prep for any geographic job or, or responsibility we get called to and then when the when the call comes in all you gotta do is put a radio and a gun in that bag you're on a plane and we are attacking targets within hours that's the way we kind of prepare ourselves but my shooting buddy my teammate in the seals it's you're always with a teammate i mean you're just never alone but my teammate uh whose nickname is jersey because he grew up inside of those towers said something to me that really it was one of those amazing moments you, you know when somebody says something or you, you hear a word, you smell something, you see something, and it brings you back to a moment in your life, like it brings you back to a teaching point. I feel like everybody's had this experience, but he, he turns to me, he says, we're packing, he's like, I'll tell you what, Big D, I cannot wait to go get revenge on whoever did this. And it was interesting, because he says that word, and I go rocketing back to, you know, years earlier at Syracuse, back, back when I was playing ball, and, and my freshman year, we played in the national championship, the final four weekends. So four teams are left. They play on Saturday. The two winners go to the championship game on Monday. We were playing Princeton in the semifinal game. The year prior, Princeton had beat Syracuse in double overtime to, to win the national championship. So everybody was aware that the last time we played this team, they beat us in the most important game of the year. We went on to beat Princeton pretty handily that day and then went on to play for the championship. But I remember after the game, my coach, is getting interviewed, and my coach was unbelievable. He's, he's, he's a Hall of Famer, one of the all-time great coaches. The thing that's interesting about him is, I don't remember my coach ever teaching me a single thing about lacrosse. Not a thing, I don't remember running a plate, I don't remember making a good call. That's what his assistant did. He taught us other things of value. He taught us how to have a complete disdain for mediocrity, how to run and, and train harder than those we, we compete with on the, on, the, on the field, how to take care of one another. And it, it, just an amazing mentor and motivator. And I remember this, this reporter puts a microphone in my coach's face and said, boy, coach, must be unbelievable to hear a year later come take revenge on Princeton. My coach very calmly and, and, and without trying to embarrass the reporter just says, I'll never forget it, I was standing right next to him, and he just says, we don't use words like revenge at Syracuse. And it, it basically ended the interview. But here I am years later, we're about to launch on, little did I know, a decade plus of sustained combat, and here's my shooting buddy saying, I can't wait to go get revenge. And it just struck me at that moment that as an officer, I couldn't have revenge as my fuel. I couldn't use that as my fuel to motivate my actions and animate what I would do on the battlefield and how I'd lead my troops. That I wouldn't represent this country I care so deeply for and those things that I think we hold dear um, that I hope the world you know, experiences in the way we do. I think we're all so different, but that, that revenge couldn't be my fuel. It would be corrupt. The reason I share this story it is completely self-serving. This has nothing to do in my mind with the business world, although maybe you can apply it. But, but I, I say this because of that idea of mentorship, that mentor that coach was to me, this seed he planted in me that flowered at an unbelievable time in our history so I could focus appropriately on the job I was about to do. So I just say this to you, be mentors. Be mentors. Whether it's at Samsung, at your individual you know, operator locations, and better yet, just in life. 
church groups, soccer teams, youth organizations, please, please, please be mentors. I just feel like we're in huge, huge trouble if folks like you, in particular, aren't mentoring younger folks to greatness. We, we, we need it now more than ever. 